A lot of photographers have been asking me about the Canon VCM lenses. Now that there's a 24 millimeter and a 50 millimeter f1.4 VCM, in addition to this 35 millimeter VCM lens that I currently own. So I'm gonna unbox my thoughts and unbox some of the mail that's behind me while I tell you my honest opinion on these new lenses and potentially the two more lenses that we can expect to see in this series. Last week, I reviewed the 35 millimeter F 1.4 VCM, and my overall opinion of it is that it is the sharpest 35 millimeter lens that Canon has ever made. And we have, we're starting off really boring here. This is a snoot, and half of you are probably wondering, what the heck is a snoot? So this is a lighting modifier that you can attach to the front of a Bowens mount or a flash. Uh, it came with a bunch of gels, which you could use to modify the color, but the general idea is that it shapes down the light to prevent spill and basically give you this circular shape. Not quite like a spotlight because there's no optics in it, but uh, just kind of a really simple lighting modifier. But the overall gist with the 35 F 1.4 VCM from you, from a lot of the comments that you left, was that you agreed that if you are someone who has used it for the last few months and actually gone out in a real world scenario, is that this lens is great. Despite all of the digital corrections and the vignetting and the distortion, when you look at the photos, the end result of the photos and the videos that you get out of camera, there really is nothing to complain about. I find it's easy to get caught up on a lot of the internet rhetoric, meaning there are a lot of you who have maybe just watched a review or looked at photo samples and haven't actually tried it and kind of made your judgment based on that, based on someone else's review or someone else's opinion of someone else's review. And so most of the critical opinions about this lens are from people who haven't actually tried it. Mind you, there are a lot of photographers who have reviewed it and brought up the issues with this lens and those issues aren't unique to this lens. In fact, the 24 millimeter F 1.4 VCM also has those issues. It feels weird to call them issues when they aren't really issues. It's more of a characteristic of that lens that although it's not being solved with an extra coating or an extra optical element, it's something that's being solved by the camera system, by the digital correction that exists inside of Canon cameras. And for myself, 24 millimeters is a lens that I'm interested in, probably not for the reasons that Canon has actually made that lens. Because a lot of these VCM lenses are made for hybrid shooters, for shooters who want to shoot both photography and video. Now for myself, there is one lens that doesn't exist in the current RF lineup. There are a lot of great zoom lenses. There are a lot of great super telephoto, telephoto lenses, even some great prime lenses until you get down to that ultra wide angle focal length. Of course, Canon makes the 10 to 20 F4, that is super wide angle, but there's nothing that is a super wide angle and low aperture. And I've mentioned in the past that Canon is missing something in this focal length for people who like to do astrophotography, which Interestingly enough, we have a uh, lens warmer, lens heater. So one of the issues that you may often encounter if you're doing astrophotography, especially if you're doing it in the shoulder seasons where the temperature changes from day to night, or if you're shooting next to a body of water, you can experience condensation on your lens. So this is a USB powered heater from newer. So I'm curious to try this out. I'm not gonna open this one on camera, but this is Prograde's latest SSD. I'm gonna open this one in a reel. This is a eight terabyte solid state drive. Super cool, so look forward to that. Now for myself, I've highly been considering getting a lens dedicated for astrophotography. One of the ones that comes to mind is the Sigma F 1.8 or the F 1.4 14 millimeter. Those are two lenses that are of the focal length where you can capture big panoramic views of the sky, but also with a low enough aperture that you can let more light in so you don't have to shoot as long with your astrophotography. So you don't have to shoot for 30 seconds to get a nice exposure of the sky, and you don't have to shoot at super high ISO settings. 24 millimeters can work. The 24 millimeter VCM is a lens that I would consider getting. 
But the problem is that it really is more lens than I need. I don't need a lens that has all these crazy autofocus motors when I'm shooting astrophotography. In fact, I can get away with shooting completely manual. So one of the lenses that hasn't been made yet is an ultra wide low aperture lens, but apparently we might actually get a less than 24 millimeter VCM. In fact, if you go to Canon Rumors, they actually kind of confirmed that there would be something in the sub 24 millimeter focal length. Now, I am of the opinion that it should either be a 14 or a 16 millimeter. Now, because these lenses are primarily video centric lenses, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like an 18 millimeter lens. That, that wouldn't be as exciting for me, but thinking about how big some of these low aperture wide angle lenses get, like the 14 mil f1.4 from Sigma is absolutely massive. And we have a clamp, a magic clamp with a interesting, oh, this is a V mount. So this is a V mount to magic clamp adapter. So you basically clamp a V mount battery to a, like a light stand. There's kind of a theme emerging here. N newer sent all these to me. So I'll see if you can piece it together by the time we get to the big one at the end here. Now, the thing that seems to make the most sense about the VCM lenses is that they are all the same size, the same shape, and roughly the same weight. Originally, when Canon put out just the 35 millimeter, it, it seemed like a little bit of a weird standalone lens. Like, why do we need these VCM motors to make it quieter and, and faster for video? Wh what about photographers? <laughs> But in some of the latest videos that came out with the 24 and the 50 millimeter, what Canon has showed us is that these are lenses that make sense if you are someone who is a gimbal shooter. So that if you balance your gimbal and your lens and your camera for one of these lenses and you wanna swap, well, you can swap without having to rebalance your gimbal. Oh, this is, this is stuck. But if we talk specifically about videography and Canon, there are still some things in this ecosystem that I feel are missing. So lately we got the C80, we got the C400, we got the R5 Mark II, which I'm actually recording on now, which have obviously the cinema cameras are way more video centric, but the R5 Mark II has a ton of new video features that actually make it way better if you are someone who is a hybrid shooter. But if you compare it to Sony, like Sony has the FX3 and the FX30, and, and those are cameras, given the fact that they have dual native ISO, they have more mounting points, if you want to put like quarter 20 threads, they don't have a viewfinder and they're just hyper optimized for video shooters. I feel like that is what's missing inside of the Canon, 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 inside of the Canon ecosystem. I would love to see some sort of APS-C, maybe not like an R7C, but something in that range that doesn't have a viewfinder, that's maybe a little bit more compact and a little bit more optimized for video shooters. I think if you would take a camera like that and then pair it with these new VCM lenses, you'd have a really killer combination. That didn't work. So for myself, as a, I would, I would consider myself a hybrid shooter, but as a mainly photographer, because that's the content that I make, my two lenses that I carry every single time I go out are the 15 to 35 f2.8 that I'm recording on now, and the 70 to 200 f2.8. And for me, those lenses make the most sense because they pretty much cover all the types of photo and video that I'd want to shoot. And I mentioned in my review of the 35 that this is a little bit of a weird lens for me because it overlaps a lot with the lens that I'm already shooting on. And having something maybe like the 50 millimeter F1.4 would make a little bit more sense because because then I have everything covered it, it, a lot more cohesively. Or I'm filling a gap with that prime lens that my other two lenses aren't filling. Now that being said, as a video shooter, I don't like 50 millimeters unless I'm doing like really tight B-roll. 35 does make more sense for me. And, and in fact, a lot of the times when I'm shooting with the 15 to 35 and I'm doing B-roll, I will usually shoot either at 35 or at 24, never wider than that. So again, going back to the idea of Canon introducing a wide angle VCM lens, I wouldn't be surprised if it was an 18 mil, but I would be a lot happier if it was a 14 or a 15 mil. And uh, this one right here is, oh boy, a million things just fell out. 
It is a mini softbox. So if you had a studio set up at home and you didn't want a full size softbox, something like this, which is like what? So this is a 48 centimeter softbox. Something like that probably makes sense for like a little desk setup or even as like a little back hair light because you don't need you don't need something that's massive. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep the 35. I mentioned in my review of it that I might actually switch out for the 50 millimeter because I think it would fit better with the lenses that I'm currently bringing with me. This is actually a really nice case. Most inexpensive lights, so if you haven't figured it out, we're kind of unboxing a light kit, but uh, most inexpensive lights don't come with a carrying case. And I am not even gonna try reading the manual. Newer is one of those companies that tends to make similar products to everyone else, but then make them at a more affordable price point. So this is the newer HB80C. It is a full color 80 watt USB-C powered light. So I've actually got this running right into my computer over there, but look at the, look at the screen on this. Most lights in this price point wouldn't even have a colored screen, so that is kind of nice. And remember that snoot <laughs> that I showed you? Well, if you wanted to, you could actually put it on and now you basically got like a little laser beam spotlight narrowed down light source. Not quite a laser beam, but uh, definitely narrowed down. So I mentioned that there would be new VCM lenses coming. One of them will be a wide angle that we don't quite know what focal length it's gonna be, but the other one's actually going to be an 85 F1.4 VCM. And my question is that once we get to an 85 millimeter focal length, will the lenses still be the same size and the same weight? The other question I'd have is, will that lens have image stabilization? Because personally, one of the things that I'm not crazy about with the VCM lenses is that they don't have image stabilization. Plus, now with the Canon R5 Mark II and hopefully with the Canon R6 Mark III and whatever APS-C cameras come out next, the uh, image stabilization inside the R5 Mark II is notably improved from the R5, and so hopefully that's something we see reflected in all of Canon's future cameras. Come on. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a softbox. It's actually not a softbox. It is, okay, hold on. Watch this, you ready? It is a lantern or a globe. So instead of a, like a softbox just puts out light in one direction with like the parabolic shape, this is kind of omnidirectional. So you could use it, you know, put it in a space basically light up the whole space. I don't have one of these, so this one I definitely will be using. So it kind of looks like, uh, like a hat, you know, I'm the Pope. <laughs> Actually, we should probably, probably test this. Oh, hold on, I didn't even realize this thing is battery operated. I, it, cause it's not plugged in and I just, I just turned it on and it, it lit up. That is sick. Good job, newer. I haven't seen something like this. Globe light. Look at that. We're at 12%, 100%. Should we should we light up the, the space over here? Too much? That is a Lee 790, whatever color that is. The thing is, at the end of the day, we don't have too much a choice over what lenses companies decide to make. And I know a lot of people are complaining that, oh, well, I don't like the fact that it's digitally corrected. I don't like the fact that there's so much vignetting before you bring it into Lightroom. But the reality is that that kind of discussion, that kind of fear is, is very similar to when photographers were transitioning from DSLR to mirrorless cameras. I feel like we're in a little bit of an arms race right now. Canon is pushing to put out as many lenses to fill all the gaps inside of its lens lineup, its RF lens lineup as possible. And other companies like Sony are making version twos of their lenses that are smaller, lighter. Sigma seems to have a crazy idea about all these lenses it's making, like it's F1.8, 18 to 45, I believe it is. 28 to 45, the 28 to 45 F1.8. And apparently Sony's also coming out with some F two crazy zoom lenses. At the end of the day, it really is the lenses that make or break a system. Lenses are the reasons that photographers will switch from one system to the other. 
<laughs> and I get the impression that if one lens company, one camera company starts to do things in a specific way that a lot of other companies will follow along and copy and end up doing the same thing. In fact, a lot of lenses already do use a ton of digital compensation inside of the camera. A lot of the Sony cameras recently introduced focus breathing compensation. That's something that is a huge game changer for videographers so that they don't have to design a lens that's bigger and, and super expensive. They can simply just correct it with an algorithm inside of the camera. I'm not sure if this is one or two. <laughs> It's one, it is one. And uh, I guess this is what we needed earlier when I was showing you that clamp. Ooh, that was a good one. See, these look pretty nice. So my honest opinion, my honest thoughts about the Canon VCM lenses, the 35 F1.4, the 24 F1.4, and now the 50 F1.4, is that they are great lenses that fill the need for a lot of content creators, a lot of photographers, and a lot of hybrid shooters. If there is a lens in a focal length that you need, and F1.4 is an aperture that you'd benefit from, I would recommend going with them. But I'm curious to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you wanna see more photos and video samples from the 35 F1.4 VCM? If you do, let me know down in the comments below, or you, you can check out my full review video right here, or maybe uh, this video right here. And until the next one, grab your camera, grab your lenses, get out, and go shoot photos.